This is Mechanism 224, an expanding pulley design depicted in the book 507 Mechanical Movements, originally published over 150 years ago. Many of the mechanisms found in here date back to the first industrial revolution, an age of steam engines and rudimentary methods of power transmission and automation. Many months ago, one of my Patreon supporters suggested I take a look at the expanding pulley design and try to recreate it in CAD. And in this video, I'll show you how I reverse engineered this forgotten mechanism and then used it to create this fully 3D printed lockbox. Let's get started. I must admit, out of all the mechanical movements in this book, it's one of the more daunting designs to look at, and initially, I didn't quite understand how it even worked. To quote the description, 224 represents an expanding pulley. On turning pinion D to the right or left, a similar motion is imparted to the wheel, C, which by means of curved slots cut therein, thrusts the studs fastened to the arms of the pulley outwards or inwards, thus augmenting or diminishing the size of the pulley. Simple, right? Well, actually, kind of is. To start, let's remove the pinion from the equation as it seems to be only used to lock the position. And we'll also remove all but one arm of the pulley. This arm is constrained by a track that constrains it to a linear motion in one axis only, and it only interacts with the central disc with this pin sitting in this slot. The pulley arm is forced to follow the slot and bam, it moves outwards or inwards depending on the direction of rotation. What we have here is a basic cam and roller. Cam and roller mechanisms are fantastic at converting rotary motion into linear actuation. And even today, in a world of computerized solutions to mechanical problems, they're still used in tons of applications like your car, um, unless it's a Koenigsegg. <laughs> in this design though, the slot in the central disc is the cam and the pin in the pulley arm is the cam follower. Now, unlike most other cams, you'd find there is no continuous movement here. It has very discrete start and end points, but the principle is the same. What I find really neat about this approach is you can greatly affect the behavior of the mechanism with only very subtle geometric changes. For example, changes to the arc size and its angle affect the force required to actuate the arm, as well as how far the disc needs to rotate to do so. You could even program complex motion using some kind of organic path. I have this sewing machine which uses cams to do this, but mm, I digress, maybe I'll cover that on a future video. So when you pattern this cam and follow a movement around the central axis, you end up with this. And I've 3D printed it. The movement is honestly far smoother than I imagined it would be, but I can already see some glaring issues. It's supposed to be an expanding pulley, right? But I can't see it being a very good one. For a start, there's huge gaps unless the pulley is at its smallest size. And as the pulley changes size, the arcs become no longer concentric. I tried to achieve a happy medium by ha making the pulley segments concentric at the halfway point, but even with such a small range of movement, I can imagine it's almost like trying to drive with a hexagonal wheel. Combine these design concerns with the sheer complexity of what would normally be an incredibly robust, simple object, and I suspect this design didn't see very much use, but I would love to be wrong. If you know of any actual examples of this expanding pulley design in the real world, uh, please comment below. So, there's no question that this mechanism is gorgeous at operation, but it's kind of bad at what it was designed for. So I started trying to think of alternate uses. Originally, I thought perhaps some kind of expanding wheel for a robot design to navigate over varying terrain sizes, but the gaps between the spokes as well as that concentricity issue would make it a terrible choice. And that's overlooking the challenges of coupling motors to the expanding mechanism and driving it reliably and blah, blah, blah. No. I feel that this mechanism is better suited to some kind of puzzle. In 2018, I designed and printed a range of impossible dovetail puzzles. These classic machinist projects look like they're locked in place by dovetails at impossible angles, but instead they employ a trick in which the two sides slide apart, revealing the illusion. And what's really quite neat is that the illusion also works with a hexagon as demonstrated here. Once again, it really does look like the parts are impossibly locked together, but they're not. So I had an idea. What if we combine this with this? And well, it took a long time, but the result was well worth it. This is my expanding mechanism lockbox. Version one. This design uses 3D printing for the mechanical components and laser cutting to form the sides and top of the box. 
and a ton of fasteners to hold it all together. I've taken a cue from the original Mechanism 224 diagram and returned to driving the center wheel with a pinion gear, which lets me keep the mechanism locked behind this nice clear top cover, but keeps it nice and visible. Which is important because the mechanism movement truly is beautiful. As the disc rotates, the gold dovetail shaped bolts retract simultaneously, and then the whole mechanism can be lifted free allowing access inside. Now you might be thinking, hey, that seems like how the door to a bank vault would operate. And initially I thought so too, but it turns out the locking mechanisms for vaults are far more complex, employing all manner of gears and complex linkages. I think there's perhaps two main reasons that this cabin follower approach isn't used. First, I imagine you'd need immense force to operate the numerous bolts. And this mechanism doesn't allow much scope for gear reductions or force multiplication. But secondly, and I think this is most critical, this design doesn't really lock opened or closed. In fact, it can easily be back driven and the original designer tried to mitigate this with a crappy pawl to lock the pinion gear. But I think with some carefully considered design tweaks, we can make this lock box a little bit more lock and a little less just box. And I think it also looks way too much like one of those awful spinning ashtrays from the 50s. Bleh. Version two is entirely 3D printed. I've removed the need for any kind of fasteners whatsoever. It prints cleanly with no supports and I'm really happy with how it turned out. In this design, there are now shallow cutouts in the slot which prevent the mechanism from being easily back driven by simply pushing on the bolts. Now you really do have to turn the gear with the pinion gear key. And I ran with the hexagonal theme and designed the container to resemble some kind of alien artifact, patterning variations of the Makers Muse logo around the sides and creating this complex top cover which displays the mechanism while securely holding everything in place. I think as is, this design could be a super fun addition to a treasure hunt or gift this Christmas, but there's still one niggling detail I wanted to resolve. You can still open it without the key by rotating the disc by hand. Sure, it goes against the spirit of design, but for hardcore puzzle enthusiasts, I think that's just not good enough. This though, this is one of the most complex 3D printed models I've ever created. It doesn't look visually different to the other one, but the disc, she ain't turning. Not until you find the key that is. Like all good things in life, the solution was magnets. And this magnetic latch is one of my favorite designs of the year because it's completely hidden away, yet operates with such a satisfying sound. It does mean the model now requires one M3 screw and two neodymium magnets, but we can't 3D print magnets yet. Well. At least I can't. By the way, all of these were printed on my two Creality Ender 3s in a range of PLA filaments. Shocked? I know, I used Prusa Slicer and I'm, I'm blown away by the quality I can now achieve off these incredibly affordable 3D printers. So you could definitely print stuff like this at home on your low end 3D printer. Anyway, the lock can be defeated by inverting the box, but I figured that's an easy rule to put into place for a puzzle. And if you really wanted to, you could put a small bit of metal to attract the magnet from the rear, and that would be enough to hold the latch in place when it's inverted. But that's just a bit too far, even for me. If you're interested in a deep dive on this design and tips to make your 3D prints more successful, I've got a video here outlining some of my favorite, more advanced modeling techniques, and it's definitely worth checking out. I had an absolute blast exploring the possibilities of this obscure expanding pulley mechanism over the past few months. And I hope you found this video interesting. If you want to print one yourself, you can find links to in the video description, along with a full assembly guide. And I'll be sharing the step models on my Patreon as well. I put a ton of work into making it printable on low cost 3D printers without the need for support material. But do keep in mind the main body of the block box is a good 24 hours of printing. So print the test pieces first to ensure your machine is capable of holding the tolerances and clearances required. If you did enjoy this video, then maybe consider subscribing because here on Makers Muse, it's my aim to empower your creativity through technology. And I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later guys. Bye.